Hey guys, Ryan Nuts here, and today I want to show you how I rebuild my differentials for my Agama vehicles. So here you can see I have the full front differential, and you can see our our diffs have double bearings on either side. See two bearings there, and they have this bearing holder. So I just remove the bearing holder, and it has some shims where I can shim the diff. And it's really nice to have the bearing holder to put the shims inside and slide it on, because then you don't have to worry about trying to make sure that the shim is perfectly straight as you slide it into the gearbox, it all works really well. So, and since I use different amount of shims on either side, depending on what each diff needs, I always, just for me, take them off with the gear to the left and put one on the left and one on the right. That way I always remember in which orientation I had them so I don't have to re-shim it. It'll all be good. So then I just take microfiber, kind of just make sure it's all dry, wiped off. Um, we have new diff cups that uh, they made a little bit of a change down here in the coupler, and they basically don't leak. So they've been awesome since we've got these. So I'm gonna quickly show you taking the diff apart. So then we got the screws off. I'll bring forward my towel into our frame of view and pop the diff apart. Then I take some thin needle nose pliers and start tearing it apart, shooting parts across the table. Anyways. Got our little sun gear, the pin, double bearing, pop out the o-ring, and then use an exacto, pop that off, and I'll try to keep the out drive with the same end that it came off of. Uh, that just helps with the, the wear characteristic of it and how you actually can actually affect how your car performs, uh, depending on how the wear is and how your outdrive runs in it. So always try to keep your same end on the same end. It just seems to work better. So keep all the parts together for each side as I tear it apart. And put it upside down, let it empty. So then I take that microfiber again, get these pieces out of the way, and then just start to Kind of clear off all the greases and oils off of each part. And clean off the O-rings. Now things that I look at as far as um, replacement. So I make sure that the gasket is not torn. So as long as it's still looking good, it's not tearing, and you know, everything looks good on that, I'll keep using it. O-rings, they do swell a little bit, but even when they swell a little, they don't seem to cause it to leak at all. So, and I haven't noticed any kind of difference in performance. So generally, I don't change the O-rings too often on these, but that's kind of a play-by-play -play depending on what vehicle you are racing and what you're running. Um, otherwise, the diff gears internally, uh, when you first put the diff, before you take it apart, you can kind of check the action of it, make sure everything's smooth, if it's all smooth. Generally, that's not something that is going to go bad. Uh, these Agama diffs are really, really stout. Hardly ever need to replace anything except for the, the wear item, which could be the, the outdrives. And I'll show you that in just one second here. So here's what I look at in my outdrives. You really want to look at where your drive shaft's running and to see if you start to get any notches out here. Uh, this is starting to get a little bit of a edge to it. It's not too bad. Um, I'd probably still run this at any kind of normal bigger race or club racing for sure. would be absolutely no problem. But I did notice on this other one that some impact that I must have had caused this to chip right here. I'll try to show that. So between that, and I do see some rounding out inside here. So due to those two things and the nature of the race I'm going to next, the Montpelier GP, I'm going to replace my outdrives. But I will save these for, you know, a practice car or whatnot because they're, they're still not that bad. But at my level, you know, we're just trying to make sure everything is top-notch all the time. So I got a new, fresh set of outdrives here. So this is totally smooth. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is especially this is how I break in a new car and if I'm putting brand new outdrives and brand new drive shafts in it I break in the outdrives so I toss a bit like this in the Dremel anything that you can get into here with and I just 
kind of scuff up the flat spots and that helps break it in a little bit quicker. Now it's more critical in the rear diff because that's where all your weight transfer is on throttle. And then on the front diff, if you leave it fully smooth, but your drive shafts are still broken in a little bit, it'll break in quick. You won't even probably feel it. And then also a lot of times on your front end, if you can make it to where there's very little dog bone plunge, so the dog bone doesn't dive into the diff cup too much as you're racing. And that's all depending on geometry of your car. But, and then if you also have this being really smooth, it can actually help it go through the bumps better. So I'm not going to do anything for breaking on these. I'm just gonna install these brand new ones since it's the front diff. Again, it's not as critical. So I continue on with the process of just wiping off all the old. I'll even clean off the gears here. So just having a variety of brushes and toothbrushes and all different kinds of cleaning things, lots of microfibers. You can get the big packs at Costco or on Amazon. They're my new best friend in life. <clears throat> so then I'll examine all the teeth on the gear as well. Just making sure there's no chip teeth. Making sure everything looks good. And again, these hardly ever go bad on the Agamas, so that looks pretty good. And we got everything pretty much dried off. So now we can start the rebuild process. So now, lately, I kind of put grease on these depending on what I just have laying around. It's not necessarily, I haven't found something that's like, this is the best thing ever, or I feel a difference in performance, but this has been working well for me lately. So I've been using the ProTech blue O-ring grease on the O-rings, and thus, I'm gonna dry this thing out still, thus in the, the slots for the O-rings in the dips. And then I've been using the ProTech RC white Premier gear grease, and I've been using that on the actual out drive in that groove. And I mean, why am I using both? I don't know. I've used just the blue and it seems okay. Uh, the blue is thinner, um, but I just think that the white maybe sticks a little bit better in the groove, stays a little bit longer, but either way, it's like whatever I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm rebuilding my diffs every, you know, race event at the latest and at least every one, two hours of runtime and these diffs don't leak. So I'm not finding any issues with what I am doing. But you could also use things like I have this big old jug of Mobile One Red Grease. This stuff's a lot thicker. Uh, that's a good thing to use, say, on the out drives also. But again, it's thicker. You're going to feel a little bit more resistance. But again, not a huge difference. Now, I also have new bearings I'm doing in this car right now. But you can see I've been using these Metal Shield ones. These are from Beta or Beta. Uh, Nemo Racing USA offers these as a big option kit and the oil metal shield and I'll clean them out oil them up a little bit so I have a new set that I was going to put in got them all ready they last a long time but it just got two big races coming up the Montpelier GP and then dirt nitro challenge so I figured I would do that so again we do double bearing so the first bearing slides onto our outdrive and then put a little coat of grease on here Use the X-Acto to smooth it around, get it fully covered into the groove. And then also kind of be a little sloppy up above that. And that's my preparation for those. Same thing with the other one. <clears throat> so just fill in that groove. And generally, I've been finding that I still have some grease in there when I take it back apart. So, all seems to be working well. So then I will take my blue grease, my O-ring grease, and put it into this groove. And slide it around. Then take an O-ring. Grease it up. And drop it in. And same thing with the other one. Grease it up, use the tool for this one, okay. drop it in, okay, now both ends are ready to build, put my 8x16s, I already did that one, and then I can slide it in, so just make sure all the action is really smooth, sometimes you'll see the, the o-ring pops up a little bit, just take 
my pliers and push it down, drop in the pin, I'll center the pin, and then once I do that, then I'll kind of wipe off that any excess grease on top. And take the sun gear, drop in the sun gear, and then I like to start filling it with oil now, that way I make sure to get oil really good down around the outside. So for this build, I'm doing 7K for the front diff. So using the Beta or Beta 7000 in the front. And I'll fill this probably about almost halfway. So these diffs are pretty large. They do hold a, a good and generous amount of oil. About halfway on that. Can always add more later. And then I'll check these things out, the cross pins and the spider gears. And again, you can just slide it like this, just make sure everything is smooth, make sure you don't have any gnarling around the, the pin or anything. But again, these things stay pretty good for a long time, I have found. So then I just drop that in, make sure the flat spot facing up on the first set. Get the second set, line it up, get the flat spot facing down. Again, just make sure everything's nice free action. Looks good, feels good. Drop it in. You can feel it line up. Do a quick little work of the gears. Make sure it's all working smoothly. Then I kind of assess how full it is. I generally want to fill it just below the top of the gears at the moment. Okay, that's about where we're at. Kind of see. And we'll drop in the top sun gear and see what the oil does. Alright, so if I see some gaps, like I see a little bit of a gap over here and here, I might drop a tiny bit extra, run it around the outside. So, and then I'll use my finger and kind of wipe off any excess. Make sure it's the same fullness every single time. And I'll build the crown gear side. Slide it in. Press down the O-ring. Make sure it's seated. Sometimes as they swell, they start to pop out a little bit, but again, you just once you get that pin in there, you kind of spin it, press it down on both sides and Generally, it will stay down. If it's too swollen and it won't stay down, replace your O-ring. That's kind of your, your gauge of when to, you have to replace it, or you really should. Drop on your gasket, and then make sure the cross pins line up. And I try to line up this, We've got the four screw holes, and then line this up in the middle. That way, I can have the four screw holes, the slot in the middle, and I will put them together. So. Press it together, quickly make sure the action feels pretty smooth, that way the gears aren't like uh, squished on top of each other. And then start to re-screw it in. I'll, I'll screw the screws in about 90% right here. And I do it in a star pattern as well. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so then I'll go back at that star pattern finish tightening and I'll go around like two times making it just a little bit tighter each time so this last one I really tighten it down make sure they're all tight make sure the screw holes aren't stripped out it all feels good and I check the diff action and these things are so smooth Gamma makes a good diff I'll tell you that get that nasty towel all the way okay and then you can see last time I ran I ran 7k Sorry, 10K, and this time I'm gonna to go to 7K. So I will just do a little cross out. And write 7K. So my old forgetful memory can remember. Then I will drop, uh, clean these out a little bit. Just make sure there's no greases or extra oils on those. Drop those on both sides. And I kind of make sure it spins really nice. Make sure the other side spins really nice. And there you go. That's how I rebuild my differentials and get ready to go racing. Thanks for watching, guys. And tune in next time for the next one.